Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example, we're given the following things. We're given that the load, represented by impedance, draws power at 12 kVA. Now, if they were telling us that it was the real power, they would, they would give it in terms of watts. But since they're giving it in terms of VA, they're probably talking about the complex power. And it has a power factor of 0 0.856. It is lagging and it has an RMS voltage supply of 120 volts. Okay, let's see what we can do with that. Given that we're trying to find the average power, the reactive power, the maximum current, and the impedance in the circuit. So we can probably start with the following. Let's do this. So let's say that we have a triangle, and since of course we have a positive phase angle, because we have a lagging power factor, we have a phase angle here equal to uh, phi. Uh, this would here be the value of S or the magnitude of S and it is equal to 12 kVA. Then this would be the real power and this will be the reactive power. And we're supposed to find both of these. This is the average power, the reactive power. We're given the hypotenuse, the magnitude of the complex power. And I think from there on, we probably can find most everything. First of all, since we're given the power factor, we should be able to find the angle because the power factor is equal to the cosine of the phase angle, which then implies that the phase angle is equal to the inverse cosine of the power factor, which means that the phase angle is equal to the inverse cosine of 0 0.856. And let's see what that phase angle is. 0.856 take the inverse cosine, that gives us 31.13 degrees. 31.13 degrees, and that's our phase angle right here, 31.13 degrees. Once we know the phase angle, and we know the hypotenuse, the magnitude of the complex power, we should be able to find the real power and the reactive power. All right, let's do that. We can say that P is equal to S times the cosine of phi. So in this case, that would be 12 kilovolts multiplied times the cosine of 0. Point, well, not the cosine of that, the cosine of 31.13 degrees. And of course, that would be equal to the power factor. And so therefore, we take 12,000 multiplied times 0. 0.856. That gives us 10,272, and that would do what? 10,272 watts is the real power dissipated by the circuit. Now let's find the reactive power, Q, which is equal to S multiplied times the sine of the phase angle, because in this case we're dealing with the opposite side to the phase angle, so we take the hypotenuse times the, uh, the, hypotenuse times the sine gives us Q gives us the opposite side. So this would be equal to 12K times the sine of 31.13 degrees. And there we have to actually calculate that. So 31.13, take the sine of that and multiply it times 12,000. And that gives us 6,204. 6,204. And the units would be VAR, volt ampere times the um, reactive power. So that, that indicates reactive power. So now we got the average power, we got the reactive power. Now we want the maximum current. And then going over here, we realize that the magnitude of the complex power is the product of the R IRMS and VRMS, which means that IRMS can be found by taking S divided by VRMS, and VRMS is given to us. We got that right here. So in this case, at S, which is 12K, 12,000, divided by VRMS, which is 120, so that would be equal to 100 amps. But that's the RMS current. We want the maximum current. So I max is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. No, 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 that's the other way around. I max is equal to the square root of 2 times I RMS because I max is bigger than I RMS. And so therefore, that would be equal to uh, 
1.414 multiplied times 100 amps, and so that would be equal to 141.4 amps. So now we have the maximum current as well. Next, what we're trying to do is find the impedance. Hmm, how do we find impedance? Well, let's go to this equation right here. We can see here that the S is equal to VRMS squared divided by the complex conjugate of the impedance, but since we're just looking for the magnitude impedance, we don't have to worry about that. So it's Z is equal to VRMS squared divided by S. So in this case, that would be 120 volts. We square that and we divide that by S, which is 12,000. All right, again with calculator, 120 squared divided by 12,000. You get 1.2, so this is equal to 1.2, and that of course would be ohms. So now we have the impedance, we have the maximum current, we have the power dissipated, and the, uh, the, the part of the complex power which is called the reactive power in our particular circuit, and that's how it's done. So it almost doesn't matter what they give you by using the, the proper combinations of relationships between S, V, and I, and S, V, and Z, we can find just about anything, especially if we always take advantage of the concept of that triangle where we have P, Q, S, and also have R, X, and Z. And of course, all related to the phase angle. And that's how we work out these types of problems.